Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Lecture 3 of Module 4. So, Module 4 is on concrete and on this particular lecture we will be discussing on coarse aggregate. The earlier two we tried to explain what is concrete and then in the previous lecture we had covered the fine aggregates. So, we are coming into the next ingredient that is coarse aggregate. In this particular lecture we will try to cover the definition of coarse aggregate, classification of coarse aggregate and again coarse aggregate size and grading. Unlike the fine aggregate which was very fine particles which you all had which you all know it is mostly sand predominantly used across India. We here will deal with the larger particles which are called as coarse aggregates. Already we had discussed that particle sizes below 4.75 millimeter were considered as fine aggregates and you can go down and down and in the calculation we had seen something around 0.15 millimeter of sieve size and if something is retained is passing through that we consider that as clay which actually is not to be considered as good quality sand if it is more in percentage because it does not allow the mixing or binding with the coarse aggregate. So, however, in this case particle sizes above this particular threshold we are considering as coarse aggregates. So, we will go upper upper whatever we want. No, we have to look into particle sizes. We usually restrict ourselves to particle sizes up to 20 millimeter. Why we will discuss it little later. However, particle sizes up to 40 millimeter we are using as coarse aggregate in large scale mixes. So, Generally, for regular building industry, we go up to sizes of 25 millimeter and below up to which, po which point 4.75 millimeter. So, in the picture here, you can see different sizes of coarse aggregate, which is differentiated by the line and it is visibly much clear to you all. So, what are the sources? Unlike the sand which was mostly from the rivers, here you see these are stones obtained from the igneous rocks, sedimentary rocks, the gravels obtained from the river, the limestones with specified dimensions as I already told and they are mostly clubbed under coarse aggregates. Why igneous rocks, sedimentary rocks? gravels because ultimately these are imparting the strength to the concrete. Instead of bringing a rock which had a definite shape, here you are binding the rocks of lesser dimension together to form something like a rock. So, what is concrete? It is a man-made man -made mass which is one you cannot break it and it is coming or being bound by these particles. And if you see proportion wise you will see the aggregates in the mix had the maximum share, largest share. If you remember 1 is to 1 is to 2, 1 is to 1.5 is to 3. 1 is to 2 is to 4. So, the largest share is that of the coarse aggregate and that is the strength provider 
of the entire concrete. So, the mix actually comes from this the strength of the mix comes mostly from this aggregate, but the remember the binding is also very crucial how it is being bound. So, we will come to that also. So, coarse aggregates are basically inert fillers and essential component of concrete. Porosity, thermal expansion, shrinkage, these are the key points which should be minimum because, because it is having the maximum share in the mix, any kind of expansion, any kind of shrinkage, any kind of allowance of moisture inside it will lead to cracks. So, it has to be kept in mind which is more found which is higher or better in case of the igneous rocks, the basalts, maybe the sedimentary rocks too and these are responsible for strength, durability, workability as well as economy of the entire mix. If we talk of the density, you see it should be less than some 1500 kg per cubic meter. So, this also gives a clue of the density of concrete. A good concrete mix is said to have around 60 to 75 percent of its volume by aggregates, by coarse aggregates and that by weight it is furthermore 70 to 85 percent by weight is coming from the coarse aggregate. So, now you can understand from these figures the role of this coarse aggregate, it is actually the component which is bound very precisely and the preciseness in the bound binding will give better strength to it. So, who binds it? It is the cement, the sand, water together binds it. We will come to that in our next lecture later. Now, apart from these stones, we have some other sources too. The vermiculites and the pearlites which are obtained from the vol volcanic glass, they are quite light in weight. You see the figure is less than 1100 kg per cubic meter. So, they will give you light weight concrete and these items are compressible, insulators, fire proof, non combustible, non reactive too. So, you needed inert materials. So, these are chosen when we need light weight concrete. Sometimes there is non availability of stone. In our country context, it is say Tripura, etc., there you may not get lot of abundance of stone is not there. So, you cannot get coarse aggregate, is it so? Or you have to transport it for, from, a, from a location which will increase the cost, then the economy will not be achieved. There also you can use this light weight broken brick aggregate as a coarse aggregate in the mix. These are also used for road constructions. Fourth grade bricks, brick parts are also used for constructions. So, these can also be used as coarse aggregates, this can also be used as coarse aggregates in a concrete mix. Similar to the lightweight varieties, we have again another end which is the higher side. Those are heavy aggregates, which are usually iron shorts, steel pellets and where do they go? They are used for shielding nuclear reaction radiations. So, wherever there is a nuclear reactor being constructed, there you may use such kind of aggregates and you see they are obviously it is the density is going higher and you see it is 200 kg per cubic meter. 
So, not only the stone, but we have so many other things as to be used as coarse aggregates. One point which I would further add to this is recycled coarse aggregate. You may have a construction being dismantled, it is aging and it is broken down. Even the concrete which you get from there, you can actually use that, you can take out the coarse aggregate from it, try to move away the sand and the cement mix from top of it by washing and then you can also reuse it. So, that is a kind of waste consumption. So, these are also being experimented and used in this particular field. Now, coming to the very important and critical is the shape and if we classify the shapes, we will see they are rounded, irregular and angular may be both are almost similar and the last one if you see it is the flaky one. So, as you know that spheres has the minimum surface area. So, the rounded are not all spherical, but roundedness actually will give less of surface area. That means, less of coverage or binding space. Furthermore, rounded means it is not having many surfaces, no edges. So, if we see a picture, you see these particles, you see these particles, they are very much circular. So, their edges are not there to hold the adhesive or the binder that is the cement and the sand. So, here the binding will be less. Rounded aggregates have least surface area, produces minimum voids in concrete, but causes bond failure due to in poor interlocking property. And it has the minimum surface area as already I have told. So, surface contact is also minimal. So, let us look into the other type that is the irregular aggregates. Here you see which you mostly have witnessed if you have come across any construction site. Now on you please keep your eyes open so that you can see these kind of things. You will never get the first variety on site, but this variety which is already displayed here in this second picture, you must have seen it. What do you see here? They are not circles, they have lot of faces and they can actually hold the or bind hold the binder on its each face and can have a more closer or compact and they can actually contribute to the binding process which will eventually give the strength. Angular aggregates, they may have sharp edges also as you can differentiate between the two pictures. They create minimum voids in concrete also. So, if you go for this some amount of this because you cannot get everything 100 percent irregular, 100 percent annular, angular. So, you can have these two for your regular use. Next is the flaky aggregates. Flaky aggregates means they are thin and they are long. So, here you see they are elongated aggregates where length is almost twice that of its mean dimension and the thickness is quite low from the 0.6 times its mean dimension. 
that means it is almost one th three times long compared to its to its minimum width and these are identified as flaky aggregates they reduce the flexural strength and they also also tend to segregate now we haven't discussed the process of segregation we have discussed it when we had discussed the compaction process if you keep on compacting for a prolonged time your core segregate will segregate from the entire mix so if you have flaky aggregates it will further come out easily it will enhance the process of segregation which is not at all desired so if you keep this in mind you will look for irregular angular aggregates and this flakiness you have the flakiness index you have the elongation index i am not going into further details of it you can measure it there are appropriate tools to measure the elongation index there are appropriate tools to look into the sphericity into the roundedness into the flakiness index but yes human eyes are always there to take it out in a entire heap of aggregate which you receive few of such can always be there some 1% can be always there some hand sorting can be done but an entire lot cannot be used which is flaky in nature now coming to another interesting thing which i had already discussed the particle size now these aggregates have to move through the reinforcement if it is a reinforced cement concrete so the gap between the reinforcement will allow these particles to move from one end to the other because no human intervention can cross these particles one by one so sizes should be as appropriate to the gaps present between the dense reinforcements if it is dense you have to go for smaller sizes if it is a huge mass construction you can go for larger particle sizes so usually mass construction you can use 40 mm particle size we have 80 mm particle size we have we have even 150 mm particle size but those are not much of our interest we have beams columns slabs as reinforced concrete structures where these particles have to pass another important point if you see is the clear cover what is clear cover whenever you are having any say you are having a beam to be supported this is a slab so you will have different reinforcements layers various rods so every time to protect these rods from the outside and have enough binding with the concrete you have to keep a minimum cover on the sides here 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 at all points and this gap is called the clear cover this has two purposes one is to develop the bond strength with the concrete the plain concrete and secondly to protect these rods from the environment because these are usually iron and they can undergo rusting so this clear cover is the basic minimum which has to be provided so where where will my 
aggregates go if we take another color we will have our aggregates sitting in these gaps. So, if this is 25 millimeter then your aggregate size would not be more than that. So, that gives the aggregate sizes for general construction the particles up to 20 millimeter are allowed. So, you will see that mostly these aggregates are 20 millimeter and below. So, hope it is clear to you the concept of clear cover and the size of aggregate and reinforcement size and the aggregate. Particles up to 10 millimeter those are also aggregates coarse aggregates where will they be used? Thin sections, thin castings, very thin shells not so heavy beams. So, there is a restriction of flow the clear cover is 15 millimeter such kind of structures you will have low particle sizes. Ferro cement where it has to move through mesh chicken wire mesh you will have to go for very smaller size chips stone chips. So, hope you understood the significance of aggregate size. Now, we move to another interesting part which is very similar to that of fine aggregate that is the fineness modulus. How do we find the fineness modulus of aggregate? Because no it is not humanly possible to individually measure each of the particles even though they are larger than that of sand and neither this is it is as fine as sand, but the principle remains the same you have larger size mesh sieve through which you have to pass the aggregate which you have considered. First of all through understanding you have to reject the elongate, elongated flaky stone chips by maybe hand picking, but more or less you will get a regular size which have to pass through the sieves and then you have the specific sieve sizes and you are allowed to stay up to 4.75. So, let us see the maximum size based on fineness modulus. If it is 20 millimeter and below you will get a fineness modulus of 6 to 6.9. If it is 40 millimeter and below it will vary between 6.9 to 7.5 and if it is 75 millimeter and below it will be higher and again if you put further larger sizes this value will be more. The principle of calculation remains the same amount of aggregate retained in each of the tray has to be cumulated and the cumulative percentage has to be calculated. What will happen? Let us see the example. What will happen? If you see the lower part of this chart 4.75 onwards it has reached the maximum because beyond that it was it will be qualifying for sand it will be qualifying for fine aggregate. Needless to say this 5 kilogram sample does not have any sand in it. So, you are getting 0 as the weight after 4.75 millimeter sieve size. So, up to this up to 4.75 millimeter strainer or the sieve you are getting your 5 kilogram total. So, the 40 millimeter sieve had retained only 250 grams 
the 20 millimeter sieve has retained 1750 grams the 10 millimeter sieve has retained 1600 grams and your 4.75 millimeter has hold the rest so what is happening beyond this when you are accumulating they are from here onwards it is all 100 percent these are all 100 percent so you will always add up 1 2 3 4 5 6 so these six trays six trays are always going to give you the 600 and the upper part is actually giving the correction is giving you the value giving you this 717 which from which divided by 100 you are getting this 7.17 see as because there is some 40 millimeter granule in this the entire bunch has been qualified as 40 millimeter and below it has come under 40 millimeter and below so we should always remember these are giving you the indication what is the actual what will be the fineness modulus so let us conclude telling that stones are mostly used as coarse aggregates yes we also knew a few more things which are used of which brick is mostly used other than stone aggregate shape is important aggregate type is also impo important as it gives the strength fineness modulus can be similarly worked out like that of sand but here the values are more because the last few trays are not holding any item and it is having a value more than that of the fineness modulus of sand irregular or angular shapes have better bonding than rounded or elongish shapes so with these i would close this lecture and in our next lecture we will move to cement water and furthermore in furthermore to know more of concrete thank you